A new type of propulsion system combines the advantage of low-speed VTOL capabilities, along with high-speed turbine technology. Released by Bell, the blades can fold and lock into place during flight. This is a big deal, because it's almost double the speed of any tilt rotor out there. When fully developed, aircraft will be able to fly up to 500 miles per hour at over 30,000 feet. However, the debate on whether or not this is the best type of VTOL system is complex, and it's dependent on the application. The idea of a tilt rotor aircraft dated back to World War II. The rotors would generate lift like any other normal helicopter, yet can tilt forward to act as a propeller, thus achieving higher speeds and higher payload capacities. Developed in the 50s, the XV-3 provided some critical data on this type of aircraft. It featured a WASP radial engine, and this provided power to bladed rotor assemblies mounted on the wingtips. It was not exactly the most stable aircraft in the world, but it did help lead to developing the X-22 and the XV-15. Today, the tilt rotor aircraft is very competitive, and the Bell 280 will eventually replace the Black Hawk as the range assault aircraft. With a capacity of 14 combat troops or 10,000 pounds at 2,400 miles, it easily outperforms the Black Hawk in range and speed. One of its most impressive features is that it has an interconnected drive shaft, allowing for one engine to drive both rotors in an event of an engine failure. Its contender, the SB-1, was also a very formidable competitor. It housed a pusher prop on the back, and this made up for the deficiencies in speeds for normal helicopters. There is still a lot of debate on which type of aircraft is really superior, and it probably would have been nice to see more demonstrations by both units before the winner was selected. Today, the tilt rotor has been transferred over to electric VTOLs. In theory, this would make sense economically to incorporate cheaper electric motors. The downside is, is that you would technically sacrifice payload capacity, range, and speed. These negatives could change in the future with superconductive motors or even solid-state batteries. But for now, Joby Aviation has built a formidable electric vehicle with tilt propellers. With a speed of around 200 miles per hour at a 100-mile range, it can carry four passengers at short ranges. Another notable benefit is that it only has a 45 decibel rating which is considerably less than a normal helicopter with a turbine. Another development which kind of changed our perception of VTOLs is the trans wing. More specifically, it's a dihedrally folding system, which would in theory be one of the most efficient yet controllable VTOL systems. With an all-electric powertrain, it brings up a lot of questions about pivot stress and the scalability of this type of platform. Hopefully we do get more answers to this riddle as the company plans to build a turbo generator variant with a 220 pound payload capacity. With a flight endurance of around 9 hours, it could set a new standard for UAVs. But it definitely won't be replacing larger tilt rotor aircraft anytime soon. Another way you could achieve VTOL capabilities is utilizing the turbine itself. There are only a handful of craft which actually do this, and the F-35 is really impressive. It can achieve a Mach 1.6 speed with a 450 nautical mile range. It utilizes an F-135 engine, a tilt fan, and a swivel duct. And this redirects 28,000 pounds of thrust to 90 degrees. Now at first glance, this may seem like one of the best ideas for a VTOL, but it's very limited in terms of fuel and payload capacity. This is due to the cross-sectional area of air mass flow and it's very inefficient at lower speeds when compared to a larger propeller-driven system. This is why we don't see turbo fans mounted on a tilt rotor aircraft, because it just doesn't have the efficiency at lower speeds. However, you can still incorporate a variation of the turbine, and this can be done through a turbo shaft which is connected to a large drive shaft. But instead of a ducted fan, you are utilizing very large propellers so it can have a larger surface area and more efficiency at lower speeds. This was all pretty common knowledge in the past, but now Bell has broken the rules with their hybrid system. This platform is like any other tilt rotor, but once it takes off and the lower speed is obtained, the rotors are stopped and retracted back in line with the nacelle. Stowed in position, they can reduce drag, facilitating a better performance. In other words, you are not sacrificing payload capacity like the F-35 because the propellers are not giving up any of the deficiencies at lower speed. 
but it also can obtain higher speeds with the turbine, over 500 miles per hour, which is considerably more than any other tilt rotor out there. So the question remains, can this concept be scaled up to larger variants? So we have seen how tilt rotors can be used in different propulsion systems. In electric vehicles, it's very effective because it can dramatically increase the range. But it will not displace a turbine jet fuel system because it just does not have the energy density. What Bell developed is very interesting because it combines the effectiveness of a turbine at higher speeds but also utilize propellers to give adequate payload capacities. Will it be the future of tilt rotor design? Well, that's really tough to say right now because it's only in a prototype phase and it's going to take a lot of engineering and ingenuity to make this actually a feasible aircraft system. More importantly, I would like to know what you think about all this, so please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.